Welcome to Fresh One, the BD Outdoors podcast brought to you by the Coronado Brewing Company. Stay coastal. Welcome back to season two of Fresh One, guys. We have uh, a special first episode here. We got the Kinetic Spearfishing boys in the house. I have uh, Richard Bargus and Blake Kutok joining me, and we're going to talk a little bit about their brand, uh, about their charters that they run, what they did last year, and, and plans for the future. So go ahead and introduce yourself and maybe give us a little background on yourself and, and the Kinetic brand. Stoked yeah. to have you guys here, by the way. <laughs> yeah, man. Thanks for having us. Um, yeah, Blake, uh, original member of Kinetic. Um, super stoked to be here. Thanks for, you know, having us on. And we got a lot going on this year. And, you know, it's a... Uh, it's going to be exciting, so definitely looking to to get after it. Um, yeah, what's up, Rich? <laughs> <laughs> what's going on, man? Uh, thanks for having us, Ricky. We yeah, really appreciate it. Um, so yeah, man, I've been uh, I've been free diving. You know, grew, grew up grew up around the water my whole life. So um, you know, obviously, you know, big fisherman. Um, met Blake roughly about <laughs> six years ago. Now we started diving together, and uh, one thing led to another. Ended up coming on board at uh, Kinetic and we've been grinding ever since um it's been it's been a, a rough couple of years man it's definitely been a grind you know blake's uh finally retiring getting out of the seal teams so he's he's been grinding um a full-time firefighter paramedic uh here in national city so uh you know when we're not working we're we're you know slaying it on when you're charters. not working you're working we're working we're, we're always working <laughs> yeah. in one way or another yeah but um it's good man you know manufacturing is going real well um you know we're we're putting out a good amount of guns and and still maintaining that high quality and looking forward to everything we got going on this year yeah we got some big stuff planned this year i'm super super excited <laughs> it's gonna be a good year yeah it's gonna be mental um for for someone maybe who's listening who's not super familiar with the kinetic brand and and exactly what it is you guys offer obviously you make spear guns um here in the yeah. u.s and you offer uh, charter services specifically for like spear fishing Mm -hmm. um, so like spear fishing enthusiasts, I think you guys will take out like any level though, right? You take them through the whole, the whole deal of, uh, safety and, and mm -hmm. tactics and how you want to approach this, especially this big tuna stuff. But, um, just for someone who's not super familiar with the brand, maybe a little bit of background on kinetic and, uh, you know, exactly what it is you guys uh, do offer. Yeah. So, I mean, <clears throat> myself and the original other half of kinetic, um, Derek Spinby, who is now retired as well and also lives up in Montana where our main uh, facility is now um, for manufacturing. Uh, we started that in like 2017, started doing some prototypes with spear guns. You know, I, I've dove for <clears throat> quite a while um, in the Navy being stationed overseas and just like always, you know, outdoors growing up and just always finding myself you know, outside in a lake or in a river or in a creek, like swimming for catfish or, you know, noodling yeah. or whatever people want to call it. But, you know, I've always <clears throat> been in the water and then started getting into spearfishing and scuba and then um, been doing it for a long time and then, you know, ended up getting stationed over here um, in the SEAL teams and then was working out at San Clemente Island and got into diving, you know, well, did diving a lot more out there and then got into making spear guns um just you know out of a, more of a kind of a necessity to find something that like i just wanted to use mm -hmm. um that i liked um versus like you know having like six spear guns and then you know you or you know like a rod and reel man you know like you got a bunch of different rod and reels you like one thing about them you can't you know, have like, just one can't have yeah. just one so ended up making a couple prototypes you know and then kind of came up with a standard line and then um you know friends started asking for one um and then it kind of started it grew into that you know and just kind of guys out there wanting to go diving and get into the water um made a couple guns and decided you know hey it's taking up a lot of time it is very time consuming to make a custom teak spear gun um but love to do it and you know started up the llc um, in the beginning of 2018 in January and then started doing spear guns ever since then and now it's grown into <laughs> a full-fledged business full-fledged business <laughs> you know retiring this year I'm, I'm trying to jump into this full-time you know I'm trying to give it a go um, 
is my only job you know whereas before it was juggling like the demands of the navy and you know everything that went along with spear fishing and running charters and building all the spear guns and stuff on the side so yeah we got lots of things branching out this year going all in with it you know gonna do the charters um, we got manufacturing stuff taken off we got some patents in work um, that have been approved we just have to get the stuff out the door in the next couple months but we got lots of things it's coming, coming together. down the pipe. Yeah. So oh yeah, it's gonna be a good year. I'm gonna lots give it a go. Out. You know, like like anything, I'm 100. percent And so, you know, I'm in. For yeah, sure. man. All right. Yeah. So, quick technical difficulty there. Um, no, but uh, I was kind of going into the point we've talked about this offline before, and how your training in the Navy and with the SEALs, and obviously Rich, your first responder, um, translates so well over to the sport of spear fishing. Yeah. And taking those techniques and those skills that you have honed in over the last couple of decades. And it's just like the perfect fit. Right. Yeah. And then being able to provide that to your clients, because obviously you're running a charter business as well. Uh, in addition to manufacturing guns is huge. It's so key. And um, I, I'm curious to hear just kind of how your 2023 season was and maybe like some trip highlights of your your best days, your worst days and just kind of how. Hmm. Um, how your your products performed in the field, especially with our our big trophy bluefin that we have here in the in the backyard. Yeah, um, I mean, definitely the military stuff with their charters and the, the you know the big spear guns and the the, the tuna. It's inevitably like a very high risk evolution. Um, so a lot of that stuff does translate over, um, and you know that's it can either go really smooth out there or it can be like chaotic you know like as you guys know being out on the water like last year there was a lot of you know ups and downs just like every year out there it's like dead nothing's going on everybody's falling asleep and you know you're trying to keep everybody awake and engaged and like everybody's burning their eyes out like staring at the water like looking for a, a bubble to pop up you know like but um you know all of a sudden it, it lights off you know and then like in a matter of like 30 minutes there's like blood all over the boat and there's shafts flopping around and tunas are flopping on the deck and guys are fighting fish and you know you're keeping eyes on another spot while you're like watching the guys in the water it gets very chaotic like very quick so there's some like you know method to the madness out there um but yeah, that's that was a lot of 2023 there was uh lots of like mid-grade fish out there last year you say mid-grade you mean like 100 pounds yeah like 100 to like 150 you know a lot of that size stuff out there like big schools of it so it It was was very 150 grade like for yeah i would say a good majority of the year like we got into you know upper 180s a couple times but so i i'm not a huge spear fisherman and and i've heard i obviously don't know if this is true or not because i've never done it is it easier to target those bigger fish anyhow than say like a schoolie size 30 pounder absolutely yeah Yeah. well you obviously have a broader target but do they do they behave much differently underwater so giving giving us like rod and reel fishermen a lens into the spear fishing Mm -hmm. world i imagine we're looking for a lot of the same signal whether that's breezers obviously foam um or if you know you prefer to see them on the meter at like 70 feet what, what are the signs you're looking for and like what um what is the behavior of this fish that we don't get to see as rod and reel fishermen who are in the boat a hundred percent of the time you guys are in and out of the water all day um right i mean yeah we're obviously looking for the same signs you know the birds you know we we've dove just on a couple turns and next thing you know you're under the water and you know there's a school coming up (laughs) yeah exactly um but that's school grade stuff uh i'd say it tends to be a little bit more skittish So all that kind of 20 to 50 pound stuff, you know, um, you can get into it even when it's foaming pretty good. A, it's a smaller, faster moving target. And uh, B, it it doesn't really like when you start to swim towards it, where, you know, if you've got a nice, calm, breezing school, call it 120 to 180s, you know, a mixed grade, um, it tends to be a little bit more calm. It'll come, it'll vortex you. Um, kind of check you out. Yeah, yeah. Kind of check you out, Blake. I mean, I mean yeah. I mean, it, I'd say yes and no. It's it's very like to school by school basis. Man, it really is. Yeah. Even like with the small grade stuff. I mean, you can jump in and that stuff can come straight in on you and just stick to you. And you can shoot them with like a. I mean, I've shot them with a single band like tiny little reef gun, 
you know, and like it just stays there. The small stuff um, in big numbers, you know, if it's like a school of like 300, they're going to have strength in numbers and they're going to feel comfortable. They'll come right up to you and you can really take your time with it. And like the big stuff, you know, it can be it can be like that, but it's going to be a little more. You know, it's going to be a little more weary, like it's going to come in like nice and slow, um, typically not as stacked up like the smaller stuff is. It'll be a little bit more spaced out, um, but they're kind of touchy, man. Like they can get, you know, within like 15, 12 feet or so, um, but a lot of times they're going to like really like skirt that like. To say just outside of your range. You know, just like <laughs> where they feel comfortable yeah. a lot of times. Um, I'd say a majority of time on that big stuff. It'll come in, but it's not going to – I don't think it's going to – you know, in my experience, it doesn't get quite as close as that real small stuff. But the small stuff's moving super fast, and it's really in and out. Like they, they're boom, and they come back, and they come out, and they're spinning around you really fast. Whereas the big stuff, you know, it's going to kind of be cruising a little bit slower, but you're going to have to like, you know, probably take a little bit further shot, mm -hmm. which is where the big guns come in, you know. Yeah, so I was just going to ask, what is the ideal – Again, me having zero knowledge of spear fishing. Yeah. What's the ideal gun to have with you if you're targeting that, say, anywhere from like 100 to 150 pound fish? Yeah, I mean, ideally here, you, K69 I, Kraken. Yeah, so the K69 was, was <laughs> the flagship gun that I kind of designed like back in 2018. Um, it's an oddball, you know, like it was kind of like. Wow, this thing is everybody's like this gun is ridiculous like what is the point of that six bands like no one's gonna you kill one can load it it takes you too long to load the gun you know but then like you know when you're that 200 you know back then there was a lot more like 200 plus pound fish sure. out there so you know you could get in and you get you know instead of the 100 to 150 to 180 it was like you know 220s 240s like walls of them so like you would hit these things and then like they would just pull off because like, you know, lots of guys were going after them with like white sea bass guns and like, you know, underpowered stuff and it wouldn't hold, you know, the fight of the fish. So I came up with the, you know, I was like six band gun, you know, which is a lot, you know, most spear guns like, you know, kind of the, you know, staple spear gun in SoCal is like the Rife Blue Water Elite. You know, it's been around since Jay made that thing like decades ago. Um, it's a five band gun, you know? And I was like, well, you know, yes, but I think it needs, I think I, you know, being my background in the Navy, you know, like I'd rather have, I'd rather need it and not have it than, you know, not have it and need it. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So I threw a six band on there, put a little more weight in the gun and that, that gave it just a little bit more range, um, to really reach out there and hit those bigger fish at like, you know, 15, 18, 20 feet and would be able to like get the slip tip all the way through because that's like the name of the game is you don't want to just hit them in the side and just get the skin because the, the fish you know sometimes they fight not hard but sometimes they just bury everything you know especially if they're down deep you know you mark them like under 100 or like 80 and you get in and you bring them up a lot of times when you hit them they're going to want to sound again so they're going to run really hard where versus like a breezer you know, shot in like a 270 pound tuna and like it never even pulled a tiny little lobster float under. It just got hit. Probably, I don't know if it knew it was hit or not. And it just swam back into the breezer school and like the float just <laughs> kept going with the breezer. And like until you start pulling on it and it starts like, you know, what's going on. But, you know, so the name of the game is to get the slip tip all the way through the fish. And these, you know, these things are like two feet thick. So big gun. Um, you know, everybody makes fun of like this typical SoCal tuna gun, you know, like these guys in their guns, you know, like, but I think, you know, once you come over here and you get in the water with these fish and you're taking these longer shots, you know, you start to understand like the purpose behind them, you know, yeah, there, you don't want to use one of these things like out in Hawaii, like shooting like, you know, ukus and wahoo and stuff, but you know, we make other guns for that. But mm -hmm. This is a purposely built gun that's, you know, meant for taking down specific like, for the fishery. Yeah. So in, in a in a perfect world, and and if you get the perfect shot, where are you trying to hit that fish? There's like a 200 pounder. What's the what's the sweet yeah. spot? Yeah. So of hitting I mean, that fish? I just tell. I mean, what I have come, you know, I've gotten used to, and just with, and I tell all the customers and stuff, and the clients out on the water. You know, the easiest thing is when the fish are coming in. You know, from right to left or left to right is just to kind of, you know, look for the eye, look for the shiny silver gill plate. I mean, you can't miss it. It's like, boom, and you, you just kind of present the gun out. And when you 
aim, aim for the gill plate. So when you shoot, you know, a lot of times the fish are further than you think because of the depth perception and stuff. Um, so you end up hitting either right in the pectoral fin or you'll hit like mid body, you know, by the time the shaft gets there, cause there is that delay in the mm -hmm. time it takes for the shaft to reach the fish. So that's just the easy, like, you know, quick, you see it, you can acquire it, you know, present, shoot, and then you're going to hit like a good holding shot, which is like mid body. Right in the meat, right in the bloodline. Right yeah. Right in the you want to be line. like yep. center line. Yeah. You want to hit spine and stuff like that just to like take out the motor. But you know, anything in that like darker skin in the back is like armor, you know, like you get the slip tip through there. It's a good chance, especially on a big fish. It's like hard to rip that out. Yeah. And you're fishing obviously with, with one or multiple floats for those things. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. It just kind of depends on, you know, I've gone back and forth with the float setups over, you know, the last several years here and, you know, this, this kind of last couple of years, we've kind of gone to just a single float. Um, you know, overall, I feel it's kind of better. It's like a drag system, you know, like you kind of want it to give when you hit the fish Absolutely. instead of like slamming on the brakes. Instead of yanking the thing out of exactly. there. Yeah. You know, yeah. there's lots of floats out there with different, you know, buoyancies and lifts, you know, and in your bungee length matters and all that kind of stuff. But definitely, you know, like a good single three atmosphere or like a Gannett 75, or even like a Gannett 100 that's maybe a little deflated, you know, is like kind of the perfect setup because yeah, it, you know, you get a big fish like 180 plus or whatever, you know, or a, a pissed off 150. Yeah. It, it's going to pull the float under, but like, I mean, you got to think about like that fish is dragging that under the water, all that drag of the, in the buoyancy of the float and the bungee it's hurt, you know, it's, it's, it, you know, most fish, aren't going to keep that down and never come back up. We, we did lose one last year that never came back up. Um, 300 so, pounder. you know, I'd like to <laughs> knock on wood, but it's yeah. happened, you know, and I think like yeah. anybody that's chased like big fish long enough, you know, has, has lost a fish, you know, for sure. Um, it's unfortunate, but name of the game. Yeah. I, um, but the single float, you know, it's like easy to get out of the boat. Um, it's, you know, it's just a, it's a drag system and I'd rather let them run than like rip out and, and wound the fish and not recover it, you know? Yeah. I mean, you spend yeah. so much time and effort to even locate these things. Yeah. You get the shot. It's worth putting in the extra time to make sure that fish ends up on the deck. Exactly. Absolutely. For yeah. sure. I mean, that's the whole point, you know? <laughs> I think, um, one of, one of the most impressive, impressive fish that I saw from last year, I don't know, was, I think it was one of your clients, um, wasn't even a bluefin. It was, uh, when we had that Dorado in for a month yeah. or two. Yeah. Dude, I was like mm -hmm. a forty plus pound bull that one of your was that one of your customers? Yeah, shot? it was yeah. Uh, that was an yeah. insane fish. It was a stud. Yeah, it was forty nine point <laughs> one, I believe, like gutted. Local. Gilled Local and gutted. Dorado. Yeah. Forty nine. Oh, so that was a fifty plus pound fish. Yeah, Easy. it was, yeah. Wow. <laughs> the guys that That's picked all it up, time. Um for the process, you <laughs> were like tripping on it. <laughs> I mean, that head on that thing was like, like you fly this thing back from Cabo or what? Guys? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Back down from Panama or something, Costa Rica. Yeah. That was a, a crazy day. I mean, it was just like a normal day. We we're rolling out, just looking for patties, uh, you know, in between the tuna action and you know, the patties were like kind of scarce. There wasn't a lot going on, which was kind of weird from like the year before, you know, with the, the Mahi madness. Yeah. Um, but we found an area that had like maybe like a square mile or so that had a couple of patties in it and there were some turns sitting, you know, like the stereotypical thing. You're like, all right, well, did like, you know, we're going to start buzzing the tower and then notice a little Dorado jumper. We're like, all right, well, we don't even need to. Let's just get ready because, you know, the the customer was like super ready to get in. Jones in. It was him and his son. So they were like stoked just to get in the water and. I got in and he, he grabbed a K55, just our, you know, typical little patty hopper. It's just like a real gun with two bands on it, flopper. And his son had a, a smaller gun, a K45. And we got in and it was like massive school of like Dorado just kind of swarming around like this typical like 15 pounders, you know, like we get here. And then uh, I noticed like a big school of like yellowtail. There was like 25, to like 30 pounders, like in a school. So his son was like, oh, like <laughs> eyes lit up. And I'm like, all right, let's get one of those. And I'm swimming with him. And his dad was like, I'm going to try to get one of these mahi. And I'm like, all right. He was a little bit more experienced and stuff. So I was like going to let him kind of do his thing. And so I stuck with his son. And <clears throat> he dives down. And this slug yellow comes in. And he shoots and whiffs. You know, it's like 
because the water was super clear and the spear just falls under the fish and I'm like, all right, no big deal. Yeah. The, you know, and they stuck around. They weren't super spooked. There was just so much life, you know, they just didn't get spooked for some reason. And we loaded the gun up and he shot again and missed. And I was like, all right, well, <laughs> just let's, and I was like talking him through it, yeah, you know, yeah. like, let's, let's let them get a little closer. Let's take our time with it. You know, they're not going anywhere. There's no rush. But I could just tell he was like super amped because I mean that's big yellow tail on a patty, oh, yeah. you know, thirty plus pounder, and and then I look up and his dad's like, I got a Dorado, I got a Dorado. I'm like, all right, sweet, you know, <laughs> let me know if you need any help. And we uh, get his son's gun loaded for a third time and go down and end up hitting like a, a twenty pound yellow or something like that. And we're getting it all situated and he's fighting it and I I put my head up and I look over. And his dad's like thrashing around in the water and there's like water pulling over his face and like he's like got the gun up in the air. <laughs> I'm like, man, that's crazy. Like, you know, a 15 pound Dorado. Let me go see what's going on. And like I swim over to him and like the reels like dumped. And he's like, he's like, he's like, I can't pull it in. Like the line's like slipping through my gloves. And I had some different gloves on and I could like kind of texture the line a little bit and I could feel it. It was pulling pretty hard. And I was like, it's like, well, he's still on, you know, obviously. So, like, let's just keep fighting, you know. And we got his uh, son's yellow tail on the boat. And then I think his son went back to the patty. And, like, I'm, you know, helping his dad out. And then, like, you know, I don't know. It was probably, like, 20 minutes. No of, like, way. Wrangling, you know. the You know, all the real line was out. So, like, 50 meters of line, you know. So, we end up finally, like, getting color on this fish, like, way down in the abyss. And start to pull it up. And I'm like, damn, that's a pretty big mahi, you know. Like, that's not a 15-pounder. <laughs> I could tell from, like, you know, 30, 40 feet down, you know. And uh, he swam down to, like, grab it. And when he got down to it, it was, like, as long as he was. And I was like, what in the hell is happening, you know. And I was like, I couldn't believe, like, the size of this thing. Because, you know, I personally have never seen one here that big. No, um, me neither. And, I mean, he just... I mean, he's 6'4", and he went down to grab this thing and just bear-hugged it and wrapped his legs around it. And it's, like, bending his body, like, trying to, like, <laughs> get away from him. And, like, it was, like, kind of unbelievable, you know? It was a, a massive Dorado, you know? Um, yeah, it was a monster. No, that thing, that's yeah. a, that is a trophy it's fish tough. anywhere in the world, but especially out of San Diego. Yeah, and he man. was like, it didn't look that big to me. I just kind of picked the bigger one out of the school <laughs> and shot He's like, this was actually the smaller one. I was one. like, yeah. dude, that thing was eating the other ones, you know? Like, <laughs> lost, dude. <clears throat> it was massive. Yeah, it was a legit fish. Um, I was a fish of the season for oh, Kinetic for sure. last year, for sure. That that was an insane catch. Um, yeah. Just just because I'm curious, when when you guys are diving patties, do you get multiple chances at those fish? Like, say, like a school of yellows or a school of Dorado. Um as far as that stuff spooking, like on the boat, we normally will get, I mean, it's, it depends. It's a patty by patty basis, but mm -hmm. we might get one drift. We might get three drifts on the, on the same patty before it kind of shuts off. What's the deal with, if you shoot one, is it pretty much game over after that? And that fish kind of scatters off or, or do you normally get, um, you know, mess? yeah, it's, um, I just, I tell everyone for diving, you know, you got kind of all day to get in there's no rush the fish aren't going anywhere if they're on the patty like just keep the boat a little bit away you don't have to be 100 yards away but you can just be like you know 30 40 yards away motors off um and you have all the time in the world you can get in swim in on that patty you know typically like the fish as a diver they're going to come in on you before you even get to the patty um and you can just really like look at everything see what's there feel it out watch the different schools of yellows and mahi come by kind of get a feel of what's going on um and like you know the last couple of years the patties have been pretty loaded so you get a shot off you can land a fish and like typically go back for another couple fish um in the past i'd say that's not really like typical like you might get one or two off a patty before they get spooked because like once you pull the trigger they get a little they get a little more like amped up each time mm -hmm. they start getting a little more sporadic they'll swim through faster they might go down spook a little bit especially yeah. the dorado they'll go way out and then they'll kind of like come through the peripheral of the patty and the yellows will like kind of go down they go straight down yeah the dorados are always doing those big circles yeah and it just really depends on like the, the school size and uh yeah. if there's a mix of yellowtail and dorado but definitely like you got a solid chance at like one or two fish okay uh, that makes sense. Pretty easy. I mean, yeah. we Pretty had that one day, though. what, we had four four guns loaded. It was just jump in, shoot one, 
rip it yeah. in, shoot another one, just throw Especially us another like, gun, throw us you know, in, and we load it up on four or five in like There's like four a couple <laughs> patties we got in, you know, I mean, we just, I swam on a patty for 45 minutes, and it was just, the, the school of Mahi never stopped. Yeah. They just, they swarmed, they, I never did not see like 20 Mahi in front of me. I just, re, you know, I was like trying to line up and get like a three for one, so I didn't shoot for like 10 minutes, because I was just trying to get like, yeah. I was just messing around, like trying to get a dorado i hadn't even like taken one yet that season and it was you know the customers were just like swimming around like gopro and just having a blast oh yeah and i mean it's such a it's different in, it's incredible the amount of volume you know like the last couple of years and it's really cool to swim at that it's just fish, such a yeah. different experience like i've jumped in the water on a patty that was loaded just to see it you know and yeah the, the experience from in the boat versus in the water is it's a it's a 180 like you are in a entirely different world Oh, it's nuts. And it's yeah. fascinating. Yeah. It's, There's it's, usually a ton of molas on the patties the past couple of years, too. Oh, yeah. So you're going, the molas are there, the yellow tail mm-hmm. are underneath. Yeah, and all those, like, sail jelly things. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah the, Last year was by nuts. The, yeah, by the winds. Yeah, and they, right. the molas like, were just down my thick. Seat, yeah. They're just slurping <laughs> those things. Yeah. Beginning of the season last year, I mean, there's like trillions of those things out there. Yeah, and it was hard to run offshore without having to slow down ten times so you didn't hit a mole. I know yeah. you're like lowers, you know, <laughs> just like clenching your butt cheeks the whole way out because you're like, dude, you hit one of those big ass, you know. Maybe a costly Take out trip your lower. right there. Oh, yeah. this game over. But so, yeah, there was a lot of crazy life on the patties. I mean, I got some really cool photos of like a, just a perfect glass surface with a patty and just like you know five big molas just like posing for the camera just right just perfect you know like you'd get if a only those it, things you know? were good to eat man oh i know <laughs> oh, yeah, <laughs> right, yeah. we'd be feasting yeah yeah it's insane uh, so you guys do get to like you guys do get to obviously shoot the gun every now and then and, and sh- spear your own fish uh-huh. not with clients necessarily <coughs> when we're actually running charters but mm-hmm. i mean we try to go out you know for for us, to scout. you know, yeah, you got to scout. Scout. Yeah, scout. scout. You, you got to pre-fish a little yeah. bit. Yeah, yeah. yeah I mean, I, fish. test I like, the product. I like to take exactly. a fish, you know, like early in the season, just to get some fish and like get it out of my system, and you know, because like once, you know, once customers start wanting to go out, I kind of like I I like to take them out, and like I just yeah. don't really care to switch shoot. into a different mode. Yeah, yeah, you're the yeah, teacher now. I, yeah. I like to see them get the fish, and like. um but yeah, we get some kill on in the beginning, and, and the other and thing we is get some good eats, you know. Yeah, yeah you, you shoot a hundred fifty pounder, you're good for a while. Yeah, yeah, you load up the freezer. yeah, you and all your friends and family, <laughs> yeah. and like, oh, yeah. I mean, it's crazy how much fish you get off one of those, you know. I it's literally just finished off, like we load up every freezer at the firehouse full of fish. I yeah. just finished off my last little poke bowls last night, so I know it's just like in never time. Ending. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And what, then you got the yellowtail and all the mahi. Oh, yeah. I mean, yeah, it's, it's ridiculous. It's, a lot of it's fish. really awesome. The as much as we, have here. we could have last year, and I, I think this is a cool kind of mentality that's spreading around to everyone is, um, you know, take take as much fish as you can eat fresh and yep. and process properly right. to store in the freezer, <clears throat> and. Yeah. Like call it a day, man. That's yeah. a good. Day. If you have enough fish, where you're like, oh, should we keep this one or not? That's a good day. Absolutely. Yeah. And um, especially if you're lucky enough to be on the water, you know, a, a lot throughout the season. If you get to go mm-hmm. once or twice a year, understand maybe a little bit more of, you know, collecting a little bit more, getting it processed and stuff. But right. I think it's really cool just seeing, you know, the the conservation kind of spread throughout the whole fishery and. Absolutely. Um, just you know you like you were saying man the yield of a 200 pound fish is it's ridiculous it's mental yeah <laughs> you need a whole chest freezer you know yeah especially when guys are traveling too it's like they it's, gotta yeah. southwest freight it or that's like, an ex- like, that's an expensive check do? bag yeah. yeah yeah so i mean we've uh, it's it's a good problem to have but we've definitely had that problem a couple of times where it's like all right <laughs> yeah i mean definitely have given just like whole f- fish to friends you know back at the dock mm-hmm. You know, they love it, man. Like um, cousins and you know, family. Keep everyone happy. The oh, neighbors yeah. happy. Ne- never they, goes they to waste. It, it never goes sure. to waste, man. It's if like, my driveway is gonna smell like fish, at least the neighbors get to eat fish. Exactly. Exactly. What uh, what what were your guys's? And this doesn't have to be in San Diego, but what what were you guys's proudest fish of of last year that you're most proud of? Mm. That's a good question. That is a good question. Uh, one of. My personal or just like on the trips? What do you think? Uh, either or. I don't know. I'd say personally. <clears throat> I don't know. I guess I got a nice, a nice pargo down in Panama that made me pretty stoked. That was that was probably my fish of the year. 
Do you know what kind of pargo? I use pargo <coughs> as a general term. Do you know what kind of what kind of pargo it was? What kind of fish it was? Um, it's just like the the big old cabrera, man. The cabrera, yeah, yeah, just the snaggle tooth sucker that just hides under the rock. Tasty. Yeah. Just <laughs> smoke the shaft, and it was yeah, you know, it wasn't like a giant one. It was like fifty pounds. Oh, that's but a, it was memorable that's because a like fish. man, we had been grinding like days and days and days we were dealing with the red tide and like mm. the reef was kind of shut down you know and like there just wasn't a lot of life and you know just pick this route this outcropping up current and, and dove down and this monster is just sitting at the bottom and just got a good sketchy good top down <laughs> shot which i didn't want to take but i hit it like perfectly down through the back and stoned yeah. it no i didn't no. <laughs> I did not, and it penciled the or it pretzeled the shaft and everything, and it was a good fight and all that. But that was probably my most memorable. Hell finish. yeah, fifty pounds is an epic. That's, yeah, that's a yeah. Good I mean, it option. you know it it was a rodeo trying to keep it out of the holes and all that. For so. sure, I can't imagine. Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah, it was a good one though. It had some gnarly teeth on it. Yeah, I love those things. They're just mean and pissed, and they're brutal. The big ones in the just... water, they look brown, don't they? Yeah. yeah, yeah. And they always want to hole up, like every time they yeah. just want to try and go get that. So it's. <laughs> They got them as quickly as you can, sure. yeah. Yeah, I'd say mine was probably my guacamayo in uh, in Costa Rica with Sean. Yeah. Went, my 30th birthday, went out to Costa Rica and saw my buddy Sean went and dove out there. And I had never shot a guacamayo snapper before. And, uh, you know, not the biggest fish, but just beautiful. Like yeah. a bright red like yeah. I'd never seen before. I've never, I'm yeah, not sure it's delicious. Yeah. And, oh, man. I mean, we did that up every which way. We did sashimi, <laughs> we did fingers. We just... It grilled it was phenomenal so that was cool it was just it was something different you know? for sure no yeah. that's the we talk about it a lot just traveling and experiencing mm-hmm. new fisheries um i think it's a good segue i know you guys are doing some special stuff this year and um offering a trip to panama mm-hmm. right yep we got a five day blue water trip you know on the pacific side of panama from april 14th to 22nd Okay. Still and have a few spots open for that, yeah. Yeah. How does someone sign up for that? That's exclusively spearfishing? Yes. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, just spearfishing. We try to make it ex- – I mean, we can do whatever, but yeah. it's a spear trip for sure. Okay. Yeah, yeah we're just going to go down and, you know, stay on a little remote island offshore, and, you know, it's like 30 minutes from the banks out there, so it's like right there, you know, and it's half day on half day on the bank chasing tuna and then like half day around like the island structures just kind of diving reef and you know wahoo and stuff like that they get uh like pretty big yellowfin out there oh yeah Hamble yeah bank yeah you, you, you know that's lots of school grade stuff you know yeah. dolphins and stuff like that but then there's uh you know potential to do some drifts for bigger you know 100 plus pound tuna um and then you can easily see that as well on the dolphin i mean you really don't know what you're going to see yeah. until you just get in and, and do a drop and they have Ono in Panama? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah? Mm-hmm. Yep. Oh, that's a good tip. I mean, last fish. year, man, we yeah, got the mixed bag, the Kubera, shot some good Amaco, a um, little bit of everything, man. It yeah. Was, it, was, it was awesome. And just, so we're camping on Montuosa. So for anyone who doesn't know, you know, just think remote. I think like the island of Lost. <laughs> Have you ever seen the movie Lost? I mean, there's no, nothing man-made at all on this island. So, I mean, that in itself is just awesome. And you know, we got a great Panamanian crew down there that really take care of us you know they work hard for us and uh you know we, we would come back after a long day and these dudes were diving for bugs all day so they had lobster ready to rock and roll oh, we got back to you know mm-hmm. back to the island um you know we'd be hanging out on the beach and there's hermit crabs like all over the place so we'd like in your sleeping bag ha- yeah we'd have hermit <laughs> crab wars and you know we're all just hanging around after a day of diving and you know, our guys from Panama, like, climb a palm tree and, like, give us a bunch of coconuts and yeah. drinking fresh coconuts all day. So, I mean, it's a it's a pretty epic trip. We had a great group of guys last year, and uh, we're stoked to go, do it again. So, we're, uh, we're actually running two trips this year. Uh, the same group that went last year had so much fun, they wanted to go again. So, epic. we're going with that whole same group, and then we're going to, you know, open it up to others and, and run another group, you know, the week after. So... It's gonna be fun, man. I'm I'm stoked. And that sounds like the right way to do it. You get you get your fishing. You guys you guys have uh, your Panama trip, obviously. And um, what what else kind of is in the books for 2024? I know we're working on something special. I don't want to talk about it too much, but um, we're we're doing um, you know a big piece with you guys that's gonna be absolutely rad. Look out for that. Not for a while. A couple months here, but um, once the season gets going, we're gonna mm-hmm. start filming. Yeah, we're that's gonna be insane. 
Um, we can talk about your new rig a little bit if you want, or if you have more more yeah. Uh, yeah. more big plans for 2024, we can dive into those. Yeah, I mean the the big thing this year is is the new rig. Yeah, uh, the Invincible. Invincible 33 Cat. Um, it was just it was time to get in something consistent, something you know that can really keep up with the demand. I mean, this stuff is getting farther yeah. we need to get there you yeah. know so it's it's the invincible was was the yeah. obvious move man i mean the speed the fuel efficiency um the reliability you know it's it's the perfect package for us and we couldn't be more stoked so Did you put a tower on that thing of course yeah right yeah i mean we went back and forth with what to get and just kind of settled on that <clears throat> 33 that they have just for you know just twin 400s on it and it's kind of a good boat you know it doesn't cost customers an arm and a leg to run you know it rides like a bigger boat it's fast you know that's the name of the game you know like more time on the fish here you know it's starting the day trips are the way to go i mean they're pretty easy to dive off of too yeah right? they, you know Absolutely. they got the you can the way that in the they're middle. built mm -hmm. kind of just slide doors. slide right off yep. yeah and the dive door on the side so okay very stable yeah um yeah easy to kind of slide on slide off it's uh and they're fast it, and it's fast. <laughs> yeah, in the range i yeah. mean how many times this year i mean you know we were just talking about it like you know we saw you out there all the way at cortez you're like hey come <laughs> out here another 15 miles west you know and i'm like eh, yeah. all right you know yeah like you straight said, through going from six feet at five seconds yeah, yeah. going from come on out know, point loma to avalon to tanner then back to san diego yeah. i mean that's insane you know like you know people it's just the Look necessity. At our SoCal routes, and they're like, dude, you guys. I mean, very fortunate miles. to have boats that do that, but just kind of the way the fisheries developed. I mean, we've had this fish for over the past decade now, and yeah. it. Who really knows? And we'll have Owen back on to talk about the science of it, but yeah, um, it just seems like it's sliding further north, further west every year. The routes are changing, like they definitely. The routes are changing. Changed. The local, you know, a lot of the foam last year was up in, uh, up in kind of. Orange County area, LA area versus yeah. you know on it the turbo local past San Diego, San Diego yeah, totally, right. totally past us. Like what happened, man? It was like, God. So uh, how much this year? I mean, I mean, it was sitting there at the Osborne, and then next thing you know, it's like everything's out of Anacapa. We're like, yep. well, that's that's a long wait. <laughs> that's so a little far. How do you guys feel about going and shooting uh, some fish at the islands? <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> but the the range i mean the speed in the range is definitely what's going to be the game changer yeah you know we can get there and get there quickly and, and those that. cats ride so phenomenal oh yeah you guys are going to be comfortable you're going to be there quick <coughs> oh yeah did yeah, you we're... did you do obviously you guys are spearfishing so you don't really need it but did you add any sort of bait capacity and this yeah. is not a knock on any of the east coast builds but they just the bait that they have out on the east coast survives in in their wells and our sardine just doesn't you know mm -hmm. so we add a lot of kind of west coast bait tanks to a lot of our boats do you guys do any any different things with your bait capacity or your your bait we just wells? got the standard one that came on 33 yeah, yeah. i mean you don't yeah. really need it You're yeah, yeah we have it's, it's primarily I mean, a spear boat so ours usually holds fins so <laughs> yeah <laughs> but i mean it's there you know but we got i mean everything's we got the coolers on there yeah, it's fully loaded Refrig refrigerated I mean, it's got the, you know the ice uh, the ice plate yeah um it's got the yeah. sea chest pumps it's got you know everything we can need so. yeah is it pretty uh is it pretty spacious up and down the the sides there it is absolutely it's, you know right. those just like any cat the wider beams you know so yeah. you've got a lot of coffin more, box in the front yeah yep. it's a lot more deck space than, than it you know you would get out of like a model hole you know? yeah it's 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 really nice that obviously it's a cat so they keep the the beam all the way up to the bow really yeah, yeah. you get that full width and that's great for us because we have tons of gear you know everybody's got dive bags and floats and spare shafts and you know we always bring a kinetic load out but you know customers bring their stuff they like their own things too and like it just ends up being a lot of gear and then you know you throw you know, six, seven, 150 pound fish on there. And you know, it gets, it gets, gets real heavy fast. real quick. Yeah. So we, we were stoked to have the, the space in, in the front of that thing, you know, for sure. Yeah. Um, go back in the front, one in the back. This yeah, is a total we can fit it. squirrel yeah. moment, but I'm, I'm really curious. Um, spearfishing, like jumping in on foamers, 
it seems a little hectic versus like obviously a breezer is kind of cruising. Yeah. Even though a lot of times breezers are moving way faster than we think they are. For sure. And I'm sure you guys can attest to like jumping in the water and that school's fucking quarter mile away from you. Not yeah. maybe not that far, but they're moving. Oh yeah. Um, but jumping in on like a foam spot where that fish is up and down real quick, it's obviously feeding, so it's through there like unreal speed. What is it like? getting in on on like a active foam spot of, of fish <clears throat> like a proper foamer it's pretty it's it's pretty crazy you know i, I kind of tell people it's like getting in on like an iceberg you know like whereas like you see the foam but obviously like there's so much life going on on the the orbit of it you know it's like you know there's just scales and fish you know fish are coming up and through at different angles like very fast so you have to be kind of quick on the shot um but you know i think the biggest thing about the foamers is just like other boats and stuff too i mean like other boats are trying to fish it you know it can get a little squirrely like that so you gotta like kind of be aware of like the fish and the foam because the foam is actually moving too you know it's like it's not just staying in one spot so you have to kind of like you see the foamer but you gotta like understand like how the birds are facing and like get it on the right side of the foamer because like last year i mean that stuff that was up at like catalina the foam was like super skittish you know you'd get in and like as soon as you swim into it it just shuts off got 200 know? boats running on it every day yeah. or there's 200 <laughs> boats and there's like freeman zipping around going a thousand miles an hour and damn freemans you know <laughs> um yeah but the foam stuff's crazy it's just you know like i always say like swim into it and don't try to swim into the foam you like a lot of times unless it's like a football field you'll kind of shut it down or push it away and like the bait will start to move away from you for too. sure and then I, you know, I just say like, as far as you can see in the water, when you get that distance away, kind of dive down at a 45 degree angle, like kind of try to get up underneath it and just try to pick off one of the fish that's kind of rotating out of the, the feeding frenzy. So it's, it's totally true that what we see on top, that's the white water. There's yeah 90% more fish yeah, for sure. and around. Uh-huh. Oh yeah. Yep. Yeah. Uh-huh. They're just like kind of taking turns going through, um, the bait. And, you know, depending on the size of the bait and, like, how, you know, the mood of the fish that day and just, like, the boat pressure, I mean, it's it's so different every day. I mean, that's why I love this stuff so much is because, like, it is different every single time mm-hmm. you're out there in one way or another. And you have to be on your toes and you have to, like, have experienced it before to, like, really know how to shift and adjust your plan because – you know, one day the foamers are cooperating and the next day it's like, oh man, like you got in on like 15 spots already and you haven't even seen the fish in the water. Like last year we got in on so many foamers of like 150 pound stuff. And like you'd see them on the top, you know, hitting the bait and you get in and it, like the water's clear and like you can't, you just can, scales. Yeah. <laughs> you see scales, you don't even scales. see a tuna and you're like, and everybody's in the boat. It's like, how did you not see one of those fish? I'm like, they're just really stealthy, you know. Yeah. When those fish want to hide, they can hide, you know. Yeah. They just blend in. It's a big so ocean. Well. Huge marks on the screen at like thirty feet. <laughs> yeah. I didn't see anything. <laughs> yeah, it's insane. No it's so, it can be so frustrating, you know. Yeah. Just like Rod and Real, you know, like they're just there and they just won't bite, you know. But like same thing, they're there. You just can't see them. You just can't shoot them. And like you try all day long, and like this, the biggest thing is you just got to keep going and trying and trying and trying until like yeah. last light, you know. And, and that's where you guys really come in as far as having uh, so much extensive knowledge and experience in the water because i know you take you don't you don't only take out experienced spear fishermen you'll take out yeah you know whoever wants to go spear fishing right absolutely am i right yeah, yeah absolutely. absolutely and we try and kind of screen a little bit before every charter hey what's your experience you know what are your goals and then you know we kind of tailor it to each each client yeah, yeah we tailor what they need, but you know, it, it's cool to be able to see people grow. I mean, we've taken guys that, you know, got in the water, fumbling around with all the gear, and by the end of the day, you know, they're plugging yellowtails on a patty. And just, you know, for me, I mean, shooting fish is fun, but seeing that stoke on somebody's face when they shoot their first fish, I mean, it's it's absolutely insane. I mean, I got, man, I got my fiance in the water this year, so her first time shooting a fish, and we jump into a patty, and the mahi come around, she sees them. All right, all right, cool. Start, Start swimming towards the paddy. Yellowtail come up. And first time ever holding a spear gun, first time pulling the trigger, <coughs> nails this thing. And she, now uh, what? Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. Exactly. And just absolutely nails this thing. 
and uh, she has this thing where she's, she's not quite comfortable wanting to like you know stab it and kill it and everything. So I'm dealing with it. He obviously runs to the kelp and trying to yell, yank it out of the patty. And luckily she didn't see it, but as I'm dealing with this fish, there's about a nine foot mako behind her doing circles. She didn't see it. And I'm like, all right, let me grab the fish. Hey, just called the boat over, didn't say anything to her. All right, let's get out of the water. But yeah, man, it's it's cool. You know, we can take somebody that, that doesn't have very much experience and get them in the water. And, and it's, it's really all about the process, right? Organization on the boat, making sure everyone's calm. Right, because teamwork. It, it, teamwork is is huge, man. Because it's so much, just chaos, right? You know, most spear spear fishing, you know, around the world, either you're drifting or you're on structure where you can come up, do your breathe up, wait your couple minutes. This is like you're breathing on the back of the boat, and then all right, go dive, 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 and you're trying to keep that heart rate down. So, really, kind of talking people through that process and making sure that you know they remain calm and they're comfortable, but. I think one of the biggest things that, you know, with us that gives people that level of comfort is knowing that we're always in the water with them. You know, there's, you know, some guys out there that'll just put people in the water and, hey, you know, you're on your own. Like, you know, every time, you know, our clients are in the water, we're getting in there with them. We're making sure, you know, they're safe. We're turning their line. Um, you know, we're ready to take a second shot when, when they connect. So it's good. Yeah, that's a big part is just being in the water and – you know, for me, I love to just get in and kind of read the fish, you know, and um, see see what we got to get done. Like, what are we going to have to do to, like, make this happen today? And, you know, I can, you know, a, a lot of customers come out and they kind of get broken down and built back up, you know, because, you know, like social media. It's a humbling sport. You know, you come out here and you're like, oh, man, like so-and-so in the Azores is smoking, like, 1,000-pound <laughs> tunas with a spear gun and I'm going to go out to San Diego and shoot my bluefin and – you know, and you get out here and you're like, I'm, I've jumped in on a, a foamer like 12 times already. I haven't even seen a tuna. I'm getting tired and like, I don't know, or I missed a shot on like, I should have landed it. And you know, you gotta, it's just part of it, man. You just gotta keep like, you gotta keep trying, you know? And yeah. Just, you learn every single time you get in the water, you learn something new. Absolutely. And, and as you should be, you should, every time you're on the water, you should be learning something. And it's not too dissimilar to rod and reel fishermen. Yep. You know, we'll cast on. 20 foamers yeah. not get a bite or get one bite and, and you're just tweaking and get one, bit off you know, immediately. something here and there you go like, what's wrong you know yeah. but then you have that banner day and it's the reward is just it feels so much more special it does oh, yeah. you know and and it's a common theme what you mentioned um just a couple of minutes ago where as i don't know if it's a maturity thing or if we're getting older or what but where it's almost more rewarding to watch someone else land like that fish of a lifetime Absolutely. then do it yourself obviously we're going to be stoked anytime we can catch a fish yeah but it, it's it's so cool to take someone out fishing and maybe it's their first time maybe it's their hundredth time but, <laughs> like seeing how stoked someone gets like that fires me up oh, yeah. you know i could care sure. less if i'm the one who lands it yeah um, if that fish is in the boat like also like you mentioned it's a team effort too like that is the boat's fish yeah. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Everything had yeah. to go right. Every everyone had to work together, um, in just the right way that you know we landed that fish. Oh yeah, yeah. I mean the amount of stoke on the boat when that <laughs> yeah. first fish goes down. I mean, the guys in the water. You know, I've had it where you know clients in the water, Blake's diving right behind them. I'm up on the tower, and the next thing you know, you see that float take off and just disappear, and then the whole boat. <laughs> it's just, I mean, the amount of stoke. We had that one day. So early last year, uh, no, I guess it was two years ago when the Texas boys came out. We, uh, it's that stuff was all the way out, you know, past the Osborne. So we, you know, ran out, stopped in Catalina on the way out, topped off on fuel, continued to chase it, and we were chasing this stuff until probably six thirty. Sun's going down, and these, I mean, these guys flew all the way out from Texas. So we're like, we, we gotta get these guys something. And sure, sure enough, enough, I mean, there's barely any light left. Got, got in on a on a breezer. They, they both went down, down and we see two floats go <laughs> under yeah. the water at the same. We got, I mean, you got the whole thing on video. Yeah, it was epic. It was those days are like, you know, you know they make it all the you know, sundowners. You forget about all oh, those yeah. like skunk days and you know the, you know, just 
waking, waking up at two, two in the morning and you know getting back at oh, yeah. one in the morning and oh, yeah. Yeah. doing it again the next day. Too. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, and like you, like you said, getting older and just I don't know. I mean, I'm not old, but I'm not young anymore. And with kids and stuff these days, I mean, like the reward and seeing that in in somebody else, you know, experiencing it. You know, whether it's a customer or like, you know, my my daughter has been out on the boat with me. Like we've landed tuna and stuff and, you know, seeing that, you know, that first experience and like it doesn't even have to be that like crazy, you know, just her getting in and swimming around on a patty. It's just like such a special kind of moment because, you know, like what it was like when you went through that for the first time, you know, everybody starts somewhere, you know, and like that's just the beginning you know and like you just think about like you know they have this whole journey ahead of them you know and like you're just a part of it so it's pretty sweet yeah absolutely um i want to ask you guys a question about derek who's one of the other founders of kinetic he's obviously in montana manufacturing the spear guns um he's up in the tundra right (laughs) yeah is he jeez i can't wait to go visit him but yeah obviously he has a background in the navy and and Uh Spear fishing, diving. Um, how's that guy in the water? He's he must be pretty damn good at what he does. But are we are we gonna see him? Are we gonna see him shoot some fish this year? What's going on? I hope so. He needs it. He needs it bad. Derek has been out with me on some of the most epic bluefin days, like early. Good. I'm glad to hear that. When we started Kinetic, you know, when there was like plenty of 200 pounders and stuff around, he's he's been on the boat and and he's 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 seen them and been in the water with them. Um, he's just, since he's moved up to Montana, he's just been getting life going up there and just, you know, we've been grinding, trying to get our manufacturing stuff going. So he's looking forward to this season and, and coming out and getting a couple of dive sessions in with us. I hope you know? so. Oh yeah. And then we're, we're looking to go out there and maybe tag an elk, you know, like, yeah, he mix it up. Yeah. It's kind of the best of both worlds. So, um, he's, he's very detail oriented, you know, he's, he's very, his gear's always dialed and he's just, you know. I feel like he's just like in the batting cages, just <laughs> grinding right now, just waiting for the chance to come to the plate, you know. So I'm very excited to get him in the water because it's long overdue for Derek. He's really, uh, you know, paid the man for Kinetic for quite a while. Um, so we can get out here and do this stuff because we go kind of hand in hand with making all the spear guns and stuff. And you know, I see the the last half of it and hand this stuff over to people. Um, but it starts with Derek, like picking out the teak boards and like. You know, squaring up the blanks mm-hmm. and doing all the stuff that you know before I get the, the you know, the seventy five percent. Yeah, I was just gonna ask. So, so you yeah. you finish you finish the final product. Yeah, and he mm-hmm. kind of he gets all the, the he gets the ball rolling and he gets yeah like I do seventy five percent of the way there. Yeah, I like the hand some of the hand sanding and shaping, and I do the you know the rigging and the oiling and all the final fit and finish and the testing and the bands and all that stuff and um that's kind of the way we got it going right now. Um, so he sees the spear guns all the time, but never gets to use them. Yeah. Um, Unless, Unless he's going in some lake. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but he does get to shoot on our awesome tactical range that we has, have up there. Yeah, 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 right. It's a good it's a trade-off. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so he's, he's got some good stuff going up there. Yeah, we got, you know, the tactical stuff going, our manufacturing, and then the charters. And, you know, there's just a lot going on this year. And, um, We're busy. But it's, it's a good, good busy. busy. Yeah, it's a very yeah, good busy. Not, not yeah, I'm moving my house right now. You know, I'm done in the, you know, my last day is tomorrow, officially in the Navy. So there's a lot lot going on, but it's all good. It's all good problems and good issues to have. Hell yeah. Yeah. Well, um, if there's anything else you guys want to touch on, I would say do it now. I especially want you guys to uh, make a note of like, if people do want to sign up for a trip or want to check out your spear guns and maybe buy one, um, let them know like where they can go to do that and uh, where to go to sign up for uh, a trip with you guys. Yeah, you can uh, check us out at the PCS show. Yeah, we'll be at the PCS show. Uh, We'll have a booth there, so we'll have uh, a bunch of guns on display. Um, And then we'll also have, you know, a good little uh, pamphlet on all the charters we're offering, our dive classes uh, for this upcoming year. Our books will be open, so... You know, come check us out. Come say hello. And uh, okay, website. Yeah, yeah, and the then website is always available. Kineticspearfishing.com. And then social media. Um, throw us a DM if you're interested in you know, our upcoming Panama trip or our bluefin uh, trips for the season. Uh, just shoot us a message and 
we'll get you on the yeah. bus. Yeah, it's, if you, it's probably the easiest way to keep up with like the day-to-day -day stuff is going to be on Instagram. I was going to say, if you want to see some of the most insane spearfishing and underwater footage uh, of yeah. bluefin, but everything, uh, definitely yeah. follow Kinetic Spearfishing on Instagram. It is wild. You have some amazing clips. Yeah, I can't wait for this year. Just <laughs> vortex in a in a yeah. massive like 400 fish school of 180 pounders. Yeah. Just like cruising, you're just posing for the camera. Yeah, I know. When you got the camera, they come in, you know. <laughs> when you don't have the spear gun and you got the GoPro, they'll come close. Yeah, yeah, that was a, that was an amazing day too. Yeah, well, I hope you guys uh, have a great 2024. I'm I'm stoked. Uh, we're gonna be seeing a lot of each other this year, and we're stoked. Um, let's uh, let's get after it and kill some fish. All right, All right. thanks, Ricky. Yeah, man. Thanks for coming in, guys. Yeah, yep. later. Cheers. Thanks.